unexpected increase in debt. That is a significant increase. And the increase ranged across the countries from about 14% to 68%. So some very big increases of debt that governments did not see coming because they did not know their fiscal position well enough. We've also seen in the period since 1990 a significant number of sovereign debt restructurings. And we've also seen a significant increase in debt. Now, under the Maastricht Treaty, the maximum safe level of sovereign debt is 60% of GDP. I know Turkey is in the very fortunate position of having debt to GDP of less than 40%, and that's highly commendable to be applauded for that. The problem for Turkey is that you can suffer from the consequences of other governments having excessive debt. What the slide, or what the chart in this slide shows, is that for the G7 countries, the seven largest economies, in the period um, since 2000, sorry, since 2008, the debt has gone, on average, from 80%, 20% over the Maastricht requirement, to 120%, two times the Maastricht limit. So we see a situation in which we have very significant uh, debt and increasing debt in governments around the world. Progress in addressing the accounting implications of this and the auditing implications is much too slow. Um, just very quickly, what we do see in this slide and the next slide, which are from um, a PwC study, is that there is some response and that around the world, governments are moving to adopt accrual accounting. Um, over the five year period from 2013 to 2018, the expectation is that there will be 142% increase and of that 50% in non-OECD, countries. Um, so one thing that governments can do to start to manage their finances better is to have good accounting, which means accrual accounting, and the next step they can take is to adopt international public sector accounting standards. Um, I've included on this slide essentially statements from the IMF, the World Bank, IFAC and the Institute of International Finance all saying IPSAS, International Public Sector Accounting Standards, are the only standards that should be used. Again, and I don't usually quote Wikipedia in my presentations, but from Wikipedia, there's a statement about how the Turkish government has moved towards the adoption of International Public Sector Accounting Standards, and that's highly desirable. Um, and I also saw recently a presentation from the Minister of Finance, which again identifies the move to accrual accounting as a key element of your public finance reforms. The current situation then is that accrual, accrual reporting is now the global benchmark. There's increasing adoption of international public sector accounting standards. The sovereign debt crisis has put a greater emphasis on this. Um, but notwithstanding all of that, we are still operating in a world where the financial management of governments, as opposed to their financial reporting, is still very weak and is one of the factors we have, the debt crisis that we have. I'd like to refer very quickly to two countries that I know quite a lot about. Uh, New Zealand and Greece. Um, one's a good example for the purposes of today's presentation, one's a bad example. They're both good examples of why IPSAS are important. Uh, I'm just making the point in this slide that governmental financial management is important because of its implications for equity, accountability, trust and confidence in government for the quality of services that governments deliver, but also for the confidence that investors have when they contemplate making an investment in a country. It's important, it's also possible. 
I'm using New Zealand as an example because it's, the president referred to 25 years ago. 25 years ago, the New Zealand government passed the Public Finance Act, which required the government to use accrual, but the accrual basis for its accounting, for its budgeting, and for its appropriations. So the whole system moved on to an accruals basis. What you now see is a system that runs essentially like a well-organized corporate. And on this PowerPoint is just a clip from the financial statements on a full accrual basis of the New Zealand government for the three months to September the 30th, 2014, that were released on November 7, 2014. So the system is running in a way that enables people to have up-to-date, high-quality information about the government's fiscal position. Good accounting seems to help. New Zealand had a surplus every year from 1994 to 2008. It was back in surplus in 2013 and again in 2014. It was the first Western developed country to increase its interest rates after the crisis. Its unemployment is less than 5% and it's rated third in the world for overall prosperity. That's New Zealand, Greece. That's the price of poor governmental financial management. Um, I just make a very quick point about how Greece could benefit from IPSAS. Can I just get a sense from the room if, if I asked you, was Greek government debt to GDP above or below 100% of GDP? Who thinks that Greek debt is above 100% of GDP? Could you just show your hands, please? Okay, either you're not hearing, or you're not answering, or you all think Greek debt is quite low. The answer is that according to the Maastricht criteria, and according to the credit rating agencies, Greek debt to GDP is 175%. That's extraordinarily high, and that's how it's measured and reported. If you measure it according to international public sector accounting standards, after the restructuring, debt to GDP for Greece is less than 60%. That's a huge difference in numbers. The reason for the difference is because the restructuring pushed the maturities of the debt out a very long way and reduce the interest costs. So Greece now is actually in a very good position and if the, the right numbers were being used, it would be a good place to invest. If it's 175%, it's not. So numbers really matter if you're managing your government's finances because that matters to the management of the economy. I am very conscious of time, so I will just skip through. Uh, I wanted to make one point. The cost to New Zealand of implementing high quality financial management is not social progress. New Zealand recently ranked number one in the world for social and environmental progress. So the, it really supports the notion that, I, that Sol and his book was referring to. Good accounting, good financial management by governments, is associated with good performance of the society and economy, not poor performance. In relation to the situation, and I don't pretend to know very much about the situation in Turkey, but from looking at some of the documents, you're on the road to accrual reporting, but your finances are still managed on a cash basis. If there was one thing, one piece of advice I would be giving the Turkish government, it's to at least have as your long-term objective to make sure the accrual numbers are the basis of your fiscal management and make sure also that the public understands them. The president of Turlop in his presentation referred to the uh, document that was distributed at the World Congress of Accountants with the photograph of Prince Charles on the front cover. Um, 
Prince Charles has been a driving force in the development of what is probably the most significant developing um, theme in financial reporting, both for the corporate sector and for the public sector. That is, integrated reporting was really initiated by um, the Prince of Wales. Um, last December, the integrated reporting framework was published. If you haven't seen it, um, I'm not sure whether it's available in Turkish. It's a very interesting read. Essentially, what it is encouraging companies to do when they produce their reports is to tell their own unique story. The thing that perhaps for me more than anything that integrated reporting addresses relates to the information society. If you take the S&P 500 companies in the United States, the value of the companies is not represented on their balance sheets. The balance sheets represent, on average, 20% of the value of the companies. The annual report and the financial statements tell us very little about the other 80%. Integrated reporting is designed to fill that gap. I'd like to conclude by, again, responding a little bit to one comment that the President of Turbon made about specialisation. I heartily agree with his comments about the need for specialisation. As it happens, one of the things I'm doing post-IFAC is working for the, the one professional accounting organisation in the world that specialises only on public sector issues. And it was that organisation that act, that's called SIFA, the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy. It was SIFA that produced the booklet with the Prince of Wales on the cover, and SIFRA, along with the International Integrated Reporting Council, is, has initiated a pioneer network for government organisations also to try and adopt uh, integrated reporting. The other thing that SIFRA is seeking to do globally is to work with other professional accounting organisations uh, to use its expertise to seek to support other professional accounting organisations in encouraging and promoting the, the improvement of financial management by governments. My closing comment is that as a profession, we're the only group of people in society who can speak authoritatively to governments about what they need to do about accounting and auditing. In too many countries, there is no voice for high quality accounting and auditing within the public sector. We all suffer for that, from that, and I would strongly encourage Turmoc to be an active participant uh, in the public sector in Greece and to press for improved accounting and financial management here, because it's, I'm sure it's needed here as it's needed in every other country in the world that I visit. Thank you very much for your attention.